Aromatic Adventure Today is a very special day, and I'll let you know why. Today is a day that I get to come to you and share with you one of my all-time favorite candle companies, just about ever. A company based out of Salem, Massachusetts. That's correct. A company by the name of Witch City Wicks. And in just a few days, probably by the time that you see this video, Witch City Wicks will have released their Halloween fragrances for this year. These fragrances are seasonal. So once they sell out or once Halloween is over, they go back into the Witch City Wicks vault for the rest of the year. So August 3rd, they go on sale. I know a lot of you folks are hardcore fans, so you're gonna be by your computer ready to make your purchase for the season because they do have a tendency to sell out very quickly. But I wanna make sure that I'm addressing the folks that uh, have never burned a Witch City Wicks candle before. I wanna talk to the folks who haven't even heard of the name of the company before. I wanna share with you why this company is so important to me. Company owner and candle maker, Liz Frazier. She conceptualizes the fragrances. She concocts the recipes for all of her candles. She physically makes the candles. She pours them. She designs all of the labels herself. She even boxes them up and ships them to you. This is the very definition of a small batch candle company. And I've always referred to Liz as a rock star in the candle industry. And I've had the great pleasure of being friends, acquaintances with Liz over the years. We've collaborated on several projects. Every time I'm in Salem, I stop into her shop to say hello. And she did something really cool this year. She shipped to me all of her Halloween candles a little bit early so that I could share them with you folks. All of the candles this year have brand new designs. They have all new labels. I'm gonna share with you my thoughts, my opinions, my sensory evaluation. Essentially, I'm gonna smell them, dissect them, and tell you, tell you what I smell. But more importantly, most importantly, is that I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna let my imagination do the work. I'm gonna let you know where these candles take me. I'm gonna set off my Halloween nostalgia. This way, hopefully, we could paint the portrait and create a little bit of smell of vision between you and myself. How does that sound? Sound good? Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into this. Before we begin, welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson. And today, we're gonna be talking about some very thought-provoking candles. Spooky candles, fun candles, but also pretty foreboding as well. Are you ready? Let's do this. Candle number one, Sleepy Hollow. How fitting is this? Sleepy Hollow was the very first candle that I ever purchased from Liz. New England at sunset or in the evening. You know, if you're in Sleepy Hollow, the sunlight cuts through those multicolored leaves, right? Those autumnal leaves and casts this golden light. So that golden color on the label makes perfect sense. But what does the new candle look like? Let's take a look at this. The first thing I thought of when I saw this label was a hammer horror films. Have you ever seen those those British horror films starring folks like Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, Peter Cushing, those vampire films, the Edgar Allan Poe inspired films? They all have that cold, eerie, steel blue aesthetic, you know, that, that cinematography. And that is what I see when I look at this candle. Tim Burton, uh, with his 1999 uh, film Sleepy Hollow, he's gone on record several times and admitted that he wanted the aesthetics to share that cold look of those hammer horror films. So we have the jet blacks, the slate gray sky, and again that cold steel blue. But what does a Sleepy Hollow smell like? Remember, this is probably the most popular and sought after fragrance out of the Witch City Wicks Halloween collection. This is the hot Ticket on the bill. Here we go. We have that hollowed out gourd aroma. Roasted pumpkin, oh yeah. Uh, but a lot of apple influences. Apple sauce, apple butter, apple brandy. 
apple brandy, perhaps without the booze, right? No booze in here, but uh, some form of beverage, you know? We could say apples, hot apple cider if we want to go there. Apple pie filling, you see where this is going, right? Apples and apple pie spice. Or you would expect maybe more of like a pumpkin spice thing, but apple pie spice, we got a little bit of the cinnamon, but mainly the nutmeg and the clove. This is a good point, a great opportunity just to make a blanket statement about all of these Halloween candles, that none of these in any scenario is a baking spice bomb. The last thing that we need, in my opinion, are more candles that are like baking spice explosions. She uses the baking spices as accents as nuances. Uh, you know, to me, they're always perfectly balanced when it comes to the spices. In addition, there's the smell of scorched firewood. And think about an old fireplace, a fireplace that hasn't been utilized in the longest time. I think we all can imagine this idea, at least, uh, sticking our head inside of a cold, dank fireplace, and we can smell the remnants of those ashy materials that are sprinkled on the hearth. We can also smell that sweet, lingering smoke inside of that fireplace, not smoky, but that aroma of smoke was once here. You follow me? Also, the cold iron that that firewood once sat on. We can even say the, the autumn air, the ominous breeze coming in, trickling down through the chimney. At some capacity, all of those elements are at play in this candle. You know, we have that ashy material, that, that old fireplace, not smoky, but that lingering sweet smoke with that hollowed out gourd, the roasted pumpkin. Uh, we're starting to build that, that jack-o'-lantern, right? That jack-o'-lantern ablaze. Also with the baking spices, it's adding the deliciousness factor. Take it from me, a person who spent a lot of time in Sleepy Hollow, this is evoking those memories of a late night stroll through those old carriage trails in Sleepy Hollow, kind of like Ichabod Crane's final moonlit stroll through the cemetery. As you're walking along in the dark, you can smell the distant neighboring homes. All of the kitchen windows are open and they're all pumping out the smells of cakes and sweet treats, all of those autumn delicacies. But with every step that you take, you're kicking up little bits and pieces of the forest floor. We have the leaves, the brush, the fallen apples from the orchards. All of that is creating this environment in the candle, you see? But there's something else. There's a dismal reminder that there's something looming over your shoulder. Something is in the shadows. The silhouettes are distorted. Something's out there. And there's that distinct smell of a pumpkin on fire, a jack-o'-lantern ablaze. That pumpkin popping and sizzling as the fire makes its way through that fragrant flesh. The Hessian trooper, the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow, the dark specter guardian of the cemetery, the tormented spirit of a soldier two and a half centuries deceased, the ghost of a man in search of his lost head. Is it a myth, legend, or superstition? Well, I'll let you be uh, the judge of that one, but either way, I'd be hard pressed to uh, give you another example of a candle that provides this much atmosphere, uh, setting, tone, Sleepy Hollow by Witch City Wicks. Let's move on to candle number two. So next candle on the list is going to be Poison Apple. Let's take a close look at this. So in previous years, we had a very Snow White-like inspired poison apple on the label of this fragrance, but we're dealing with something a bit different in this situation. We have these sinister looking apples with faces on them, right? Obviously, these apple trees are tucked away somewhere in a black forest. It's very hazy and foggy. There's an ominous glow backlighting these apples. I'm just gonna recommend, if you ever come across an apple tree 
and the, and the fruit has faces on them, just go to the next tree. I mean, I think eating one of these has a uh, disaster written all over it. But the biggest question is, what does a poison apple smell like? Well, there's only one way to find out. So not just the classic mulled apple cider, that hot spiced cup mug of apple cider, but also the smell of apple maceration. So when you're making apple cider, right, you crush the, the apples, extracting all of the juices. And what you're leaving behind is the skins, the seeds, and the stems. This is called apple must. And if you've ever smelled that before, right here. So you're not just getting the juice, but you're getting the crushed skins, the solids of that apple. And maybe even a little bit of like a Bartlett pear thing happening in here too. And to describe the, the particular apple variety, we, we could really choose numerous different varieties of apples to talk about. But I'm gonna pick one that's not really well known. It's called the Jonah Gold. It's a hybrid apple of a golden delicious apple and a Jonathan apple. Jonathan apple is one of America's oldest varieties of apples. And uh, the Jonah Gold uh, was created right here in New York State. It's tangy, it's sweet, and it's highly aromatic. It's great for baking, it's great for eating, and it's great for apple cider. So win, win, win. So freshly grated cinnamon stick, we got some clove, but a big, big presence of orange peel. And that orange peel is bridging the fruitiness of the apple. It's also complementing the spicy zestiness is complementing the baking spices in this candle, while also contrasting the apple wood like base note. So whenever I talk about a well-balanced candle, this is what I mean. Bridging, complementing, contrasting. This is a well, very well balanced candle. And sticking with that orange, have we ever made or smelled candied orange slices? Slices of orange that have been candied. They're very juicy. Uh, they smell very zesty. And of course they have that you know, very concentrated aroma because of the heightened sweetness. I think that's a good descriptor for this candle. So when we add this all together, this is a brilliant expression of that golden, hazy, spiced, hot apple cider, uh, that mug, or better yet, that cup of cider that you can purchase off the streets of Salem, Massachusetts during uh, the Halloween season. I'm telling you, that stuff, it's so good. That, that cider will warm you to the bone and uh, it'll give you, certainly give you a kick of energy, a jolt because of uh, the sugar content. And when you burn this candle, this will uh, certainly warm you to the bone as well. And it may even give you that jolt of energy because it is a sweet apple experience. Who said poison couldn't be a little fun? Great candle for autumn, fantastic candle for Halloween. Uh, you can burn this all autumn long in my opinion. Which city wicks poison apple? Let's move on to candle number three. This one titled Black Bat. Let's take a look at the new label for Black Bat. Wow, that is different. Again, these labels are like dioramas. They're these panoramic labels. So pictured, we see this neglected, long forgotten cemetery at dusk. The winged and nocturnal creatures are emerging from the hollowed out trees, caves, and local barns. They're in search of one thing and one thing only, a sweet treat or, or blood. They're, they're in search of blood is what they're in search of. Green eyes too, green eyes. Let's see what Black Bat is all about. Whew. So right off the bat, Right off the bat, I'm smelling cedar and cinnamon. That's always an interesting combination. I love that, but there's a whole lot going on here. But I feel as though I am this bat 
like I'm perched high up on a tree somewhere. This pine tree deep inside because I'm smelling pine sap, pine needles, pine cones, but more specifically, blue spruce needles. There is an icy blue spruce quality to this candle and I'll talk about that just a little bit. Also, we're getting some fruitiness, winter berries. Now, winter berries, like during Christmas when we see the holly decorations, we think winter berries would taste something like cranberry or raspberry or pomegranate or something like that, like red fruit. They don't, and they're, they can be poisonous. Uh, so don't don't eat them. But in your mind, in our mind, at least my mind, I think when I see those those winter berries, I'm thinking of red fruit aromatics. And that's what's happening here. I'm smelling that cranberry. I'm smelling that raspberry. I'm smelling that pomegranate. I'm smelling like really tart cherry. I'm even smelling ruby red grapefruit. There's some citrus notes that complement the citrusy nature of the spruce and the juniper berries. And you think about all those fruits, okay, they're not all red fruit, but they all have red fruit juice, which is putting in our mind the idea of this bat whose thirst needs, needs to be quenched. Needs to be quenched by some thick, viscous, red liquid. Blood. There's some herbal notes here that's enhancing that icy blue spruce that I was speaking of. Perhaps some eucalyptus, maybe something like mint, but there is a mentholated effect, like a blast of cold October air. And there has to be, it has to be cold because if we're with these bats perched up in a tree in October, we're gonna be cold, it's gonna be chilly. We're gonna be saying to ourselves, uh, I wish, I brought my coat this evening, it's kind of cold. But then we realize that it's just a candle and that we're not outside, we're not in a tree, we're not among the, the bats. We're safe from the bats with the gleaming green eyes. Or are we safe? I don't know. But either way, this is a spicy, cooling fragrance that has those red fruit aromatics. For me, this is a great counterpart to the poison apple candle. The poison apple, traditional New England, classic hot mulled spiced apple cider. But if you're looking for something a little bit more red fruit, you want that pomegranate cider. Pomegranate cider was not something uh, I grew up with. It wasn't on the menu being in New England, at least for me. Uh, so this to me is a nice change of pace. So go with the apple. If you're, in, if you're feeling the apple, go with the poison apple. If you're feeling the pomegranate cider, go with the black bat, or better yet, burn them together and get a collective aromatic experience out of the two candles as they converge. That's something I'd like to do. A black bat by Witch City Wicks. Let's keep going. Candle number four. All Hallows Eve. This was one of my very first Witch City Wix candles. It was gifted to me by Liz the first time I visited her in Salem. We have a clear starry night. The stars and the moon illuminating this overgrown boneyard. Perched high up on a mangled tree, we have that lone vampire bat. And we also have the raven uh, valiantly uh, roosting on top of that tombstone. Beautiful artwork. Let's dip into it and see what it smells like in 2018. <sighs> this truly does evoke the feeling of being outdoors in October in a very authentic way. If you ever found yourself lost in the countryside with the sun, visibly falling below the horizon, stripping away any of the day's warmth. It becomes increasingly colder and colder. It's foggy and it's, it's, it's spooky, right? Uh, you know to get home, you have to work your way through tall blades of grass. The soil is soft and freezing cold. So every step that you take, your feet sink deeper and deeper and your toes are just getting frigid. Protruding from the ground, we have like large dead roots from gnarly trees. We have the decaying leaves. We somewhere 
have like a fire pit, you know, uh, that's emitting this expired firewood wisp of smoke. You know, all along the countryside, we have apples, apples for days, just slowly sitting there, fermenting on the ground. But thankfully, the light from the moon, the light from the stars, the sweet smells of autumn pastries guide us safely on our way home. If that's not a portrait of a candle, I don't know what is. This is not only a very poetic candle in its construction, but it's very authentic. It's very real. There, when I say roots, and I say grass, and I say soil, and I say moss, I mean it because I can smell it. I can smell it in this candle. Let's start to dissect this a little bit. Uh, this is uh, an earthy candle. Earthy in a way that I don't think any of these other candles are earthy. And uh, when I s mention that sometimes, folks will say, well, why would you want a candle to smell earthy? Well, earth smells amazing. End of story, period. But I think any candle maker would tell you that when you're making uh, an earthy like candle or an outdoorsy candle, you have to tread lightly because it could be very, very easy to overdo it. This is done with grace, All Hallows Eve. Uh, Grace Kelly would be proud. And here's another big topic, patchouli. I know so many folks out there who just recoil at the sound of the word patchouli. And you know what? I don't blame them, you know? Uh, so I, there's just certain fragrances that people don't enjoy. And patchouli really is a dangerous one for some people. Um, a lot of folks say, I don't want a candle with even a touch of patchouli inside of it. So here's a little tale that I'll, I'd like to share. Uh, this candle has patchouli, and I've approached a lot of people uh, who don't like patchouli. Uh, one in particular, I won't say who or where, uh, but someone who just admittedly said, I know patchouli, I could smell it a mile away, and I can't stand it. I grabbed this candle, and I, I just simply asked them, what do they think? And they sat there and they smelled it. And they were kind of breaking it down, just like I was, you know, kind of telling the story of how they see it. Never, at, at, even at one point, did they mention patchouli. Uh, and when I asked them whether or not they liked the fragrance, they said they loved this candle. I said, would you burn this candle? Yes. I said, would you purchase this candle? They said, absolutely. And then I broke the news to them. There's patchouli in this candle. And I wish I had that moment on, on camera. So my point is, it's, it's the same thing as baking spices, right? Baking spices can be taken way to a point where they're, they're overboard, they're out of control. No question there's patchouli in this candle, but if you are one of those folks who can't stand patchouli, just take it, take it from me. Give a candle, a candle like this a shot because patchouli can truly bring a fragrance to the next level when it comes to true outdoor authentic aromas. You know, moving on from patchouli, I'm gonna guess there are other components here like vetiver. Vetiver uh, smells a lot like roots, like you just pulled out like a huge chunk of uh, grass from the ground and you're smelling the root systems. Or you pulled a carrot out of the ground and you smell the roots. And something else that I think that's adding to the overall outdoorsy earthiness to this candle, I have to venture to guess, but I think I got it. Myrrh. Myrrh, uh, we associate with incense, but it's um, a warm, thick, resinous, sweet smell. Very woody, too. So putting all of those resinous, herbal, outdoorsy, woodsy notes aside, this is all going to be uh, rounded out, smoothened out, like you have a spatula and you're, you're putting the frosting on the top of a cake. It's going to be smoothened out with super, super sweet apple. That's why I said fermented apple in uh, my description. Autumn night meets this bright, sweet apple. And of course that apple is going to be dusted with a little bit of that apple pie spice, a little bit of the cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, and clove. But I think out of 
all of the candles that I can think of produced by Witch City Wicks. This really does remind me of Halloween night. When I was a child, being out long after dark with my brothers trick-or-treating, uh, we would take shortcuts through the orchards, uh, but the excitement of those Halloween nights, going on many little adventures with my brothers, uh, I think this candle is aptly named, beautifully named. For those of you who are hardcore Halloween candle fans, you know who you are. This one is a must. And trust me, if uh, you need other people to give you a testament, they're out there. Ask them. They'll tell you the same thing. All Hallows' Eve by Witch City Wicks. Candle number five. A brand new fragrance trick or treat. And any hardcore Witch City Wicks fan out there will know that back in the day, there was a trick or treat candle. Uh, I think we're dealing with a completely different concept. So looking at this label, we have this beautiful witch's poison green colored sky and that branch with one of my favorite things, the owl, with his eyes gleaming. He's looking right at us as if to say, why are you so foolish on being out on such a spooky evening? He's judging us, is what he's doing, that owl. What does this candle smell like? So many possibilities, so many. So I have a concept and I really love it, so let's run with it. Imagine we grabbed our trick-or-treat bag, we jumped into a time machine, we took it to the early 20th century, and we filled that trick-or-treat bag up with old-timey, old-fashioned, early 20th century candies. I do smell some contemporary candies in here, and I gotta be careful when I say contemporary, because when I say contemporary, I mean candies from my childhood, which are anything but contemporary. Uh, starting with the classic gumball, like straight-up gumball, quarter, twist, down the chute, here it comes, double bubble, bazooka joe, or even um, Hubba Bubba uh, bubblegum tape. Remember that? Pink bubblegum concoction with the powder on side. Taking a step further, we have cinnamon candies like Red Hots. You know, Red Hots are those little like pellets that are super dangerous because you could choke on them. Uh, but hot tamales and atomic fireballs. I know they go back, they go way back, atomic fireballs. So there is that spicy hot cinnamon candy. Penny candies, the classic penny candies. We could say jelly beans, candy buttons. We've all had candy buttons, right? Necco wafers to, um, my point being like that powdery, sweet, confectionery candy without the tartness. These were the days before citric acid and malic acid, before we had candies like Skittles and Starburst. There's nothing really tart about this. We also have some like medicinal cherry candy notes in here. So think of Luden's cherry cough drops. We could think of straight up cherry dum-dums. You know, just that, that classic cherry candy. Root beer barrels, for sure. And super warm and gooey Turkish taffy and salt water taffy. But here is what set me over the edge. A truly mind-blowing experience. I knew there was something else in this candle that was reminding me of something that was inside of a bag of tricks or treats. You know what I mean? And I was racking my brain, I was going through the Rolodex of all of the candies that uh, were out there, are out there, all of the old-time candies and I just couldn't put my finger on it until I thought of nickel nips. Remember nickel nips? The little soda pop wax bottles of candy? Well, that's not what I'm smelling in here, but when I thought of the wax bottles, bam, there it was. A memory that I thought was lost, erased from existence, suddenly was at the forefront of my mind, receiving my very first set of wax vampire teeth 
or lips, whatever they call them. And something in this candle brought that memory to the forefront. So this is a candle. It's wax. Wax lips, they're made of wax. But trust me, there's something in this candle. Uh, and there's something about those wax lips. There's something happening here that's making me think of those wax lips specifically. And I think if you smelled it, uh, you would experience the same thing. Uh, a moment, a memory I thought was gone, lost forever. This candle uh, brought it back. So can aroma, can candles make us retrieve memories that uh, are gone? Well, that's precisely what this candle just did. Whew. Trick or treat. So in summary, a good old burlap sack filled with nostalgic old fashioned tricks or treats uh, with some contemporary things thrown in there for fun, but uh, a very welcomed addition, if you ask me, to the Witch City Wix Halloween Collection lineup. But we have one more candle to talk about, and it's a doozy. So apparently, and unbeknownst to me, pumpkin head is a term of endearment. Folks from Salem, uh, they'll call each other pumpkin head. Very much like I would call someone sweetheart, or cutie, or baby, sweetie pie, sweet cheeks, crumpet. Crumpet's a good one. Try that out. Uh, but Pumpkinhead is another nickname that you can put in your repertoire of cutesy nicknames, uh, which is actually quite endearing, to be honest. But for me, Pumpkinhead growing up had a much different meaning. I'm a, I was and I still am a big movie monster fan. So Pumpkinhead always resembled the, the movie creature, the monster Pumpkinhead. To me, one of the greatest on-screen monsters of all time. I said I was going to burn at least three of these this, this season. And after I talk about it for a little bit, I think, I think you'll know why. Here we go. So, before I say a single word about this candle, let's have a discussion about the pumpkin spice craze. When did the pumpkin spice craze begin? When will it end? Every year, we see an assortment of products, pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice donuts, which are delicious, but uh, pumpkin spice gum, pumpkin spice gelato, pumpkin spice everything, pumpkin spice tortilla chips from Trader Joe's. What are you doing, Trader Joe's? I'll admit, I had them and they were delicious. They were. Trader Joe's, it, it was a home run. With that said, for the sake of this evaluation, for the sake of this candle, take the whole pumpkin spice craze and just put it aside for a second. Forget that it ever happened because I want you to dig deeper into your mind. I want you to recall much older memories. I want you to tap in to your nostalgia just for a moment, just for a moment. Now, pumpkin pie is really just as much about the spices as it is about the pumpkin. Traditional pumpkin pie spice is cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. You can add any spices you want. And in fact, there's this is kind of like a mixture of apple pie spice and pumpkin spice because we do get clove. We're getting a little bit of all spice. We're also getting some more exotic spices like chai masala star anise, cardamom, oh yeah, there's some exotic spices happening in here. But even with this assortment of spices, I have to repeat this, this is not a baking spice explosion because it's gonna be so well balanced with sweet cream, mounds of whipped cream. Uh, not dollops, mounds of whipped cream. And if you're thinking about this in beverage form, um, like this is a spiced up chai tea, just think of an extra helping, an extra dose of heavy cream in that mug of tea. And this is so creamy, so creamy in the best way, that if you wanted to call this pumpkin pie cheesecake, I'm totally there with you all the way. Uh, think about another pumpkin treat, sweetened, spiced, 
uh, crispy, crunchy, uh, pulled hot out of the oven with brown sugar, the coffee cake crumble on there. And maybe, just maybe, on the side, we have whatever the folks make at Cinnabon, whatever that white stuff is that they make, maybe we have a side of it uh, right next to our pie. Either way, this is a beautiful exposition of baking spices, autumn, pumpkin, pastries, sweet cream, sugar, and baked goods. Can you handle that? Is that too much for you? It's not too much for me. Can you see why I'll be burning three of these this season? Pumpkin head, not just a, a term of endearment, but apparently just about the most delicious candle I've ever smelled. This is not just another pumpkin spice candle. This is not just another Halloween candle. And while we're at it, this is not just another autumn candle or a sweet treat candle. To me, this is the ultimate pumpkin aromatic experience. And as Marty McFly would say, uh, your, your kids are gonna love it. And that is going to conclude the six fragrances for Witch City Wicks 2018. Now here's the thing, folks. If you go to the website and you're like, oh no, everything is sold out, don't worry. The candles, the fragrances, they will be restocked. If you follow Liz or Witch City Wicks on Instagram, they will give you updates when they're going to have the candles restocked, but you can't just sit on it. You gotta be active, you gotta be ready to purchase your order because all of these have a tendency to sell out in an instant. And you wanna get these early because you wanna be enjoying them throughout September and October. You don't wanna get these two days before Halloween. So I want to give a huge warm shout out to Witch City Wicks, Liz Frazier for supplying these beautiful Halloween candles. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, the button right there, hit it. Because we're not just a candle evaluation show. No, we're a destination-based channel. We go places. And this is the time of the year where we really ramp it up. You know, with the summer coming to an end, we're jumping into autumn. Before you know it, it's Halloween and then we're Christmas. We're going places and I'm taking you guys along with me. I, I would love to have you guys in the passenger seat for all of the aromatic adventures that I have in store. But for today, that is gonna be it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed everything you saw today. I'm sure if you purchase any of these candles, you'll be very happy as well. Once again, thanks again for joining. I will be seeing you folks soon, but until then, be good. <laughs>